podcast up, started, and ready. How's everybody doing out there? In fact, before I get the podcast out there, let me actually go ahead and share this out on my social media site so that everybody does know that I'm live. Family, if you can, please help assist me in sharing this out. Please help assist me in sharing this out. How's everybody doing today? Um, as you can see, prices are in the green, but prices are actually down from where we were currently at in our actuality. Prices are actually down from where we were at. I'm actually looking for more downside as of right now than upside. Just because of a couple of different things. But um okay, there we go. Let me go ahead and share this out. And once again, like I said, family, if you can, please help assist me in sharing this out as well. Grand Rising, Brother Omar. Peace, power, prosperity, Brother uh, Boy. How's everybody doing? Okay, we got that. Let me go ahead and share this out. Like I said, I will be doing an episode of New Money Matrix podcast that's rising. It's going to be a pretty quick video. Just chop it up with everybody. See where everybody is right now. There we go. There we go. What's going on, Brother Coleman? Peace, peace, peace. Grand Rising, how we doing? Islam, Brother Bay. Brother Kennedy, peace. Grand Rising, how we doing? See if I can get a couple of individuals in here before 7 o'clock hits. There we go. Got that shared out. Plugged in. Like I said, let me go ahead and actually get my um let me get my uh podcast pulled up. I actually haven't recorded a podcast episode in a while, so I do want to do that real quick. And then I'm gonna reintroduce myself and then we're gonna take off, family. It's going on 6 51 a.m. Shasta Chicago time. Brother Rise, peace. How we doing? Hold on. Let's see. New episode. New episode. There we go. Let me see how do you invite friends, record with friends. I want to call to make sure you and your guests all have a strong network connection. Okay, it's cool. So we can start doing that then. That's nice. That's nice. Okay. Um, just figuring out I got some more uh leeway with the little um podcast where it's, i cannot record with other individuals and i've been meaning to do that for a while how's everybody doing today though it is thirsty thursdays uh march 26 2020 um we are living in new times right now you know unprecedented times on um, times like i don't think anybody has ever seen before um both socially and economically um as far as the markets go, as we can see, the crypto market is in the green as of right now, though in actuality, it is down over the last, um, it, it's down a bit. Um, seeing Bitcoin reaching as high as 60, 67, um, Ethereum definitely rocked up to about 140 and some change. Man, the family is good. The family is good. How's everybody's family out there? How's everybody uh, keeping itself sane during these times? The biggest thing right now for those that have the health concern is your immune system, in my opinion. I'm not a professional in any way, shape, or form, so don't take that as any type of professional advice, more like common sense. You know, if it's something going around, then, you know, nine times out of ten, you want to build your immune system up, right? That's what's supposed to fight for you, not so much outside entities such as doctors and such. And I think when it comes to health, it's damn near like religion. Man, I'm going to leave all that alone. 
Never mind. But um, the moral of the story is we need to stop looking on the outside for help when all the help you need is right there with you. Man, they out here buying their legacy right now, ain't they, Brother Hill? Miss Miss Hill, how we doing? Grand Rising, Queen. We got Brother Hill and Miss Hill checking in. Grand Rising, how we doing? Miss Henderson, excuse me. Family, if y'all can, please help assist me in sharing this out real quick. Please help assist me in sharing this out real quick. Get this out to as many individuals as possible. Just trying to get a couple people to tune in. Um, let's see, public. Okay, I do have it on public now. I didn't have it on public before. Um, uh, man, can I share this somehow? I don't think so. Uh, in fact, you know what? I probably can. Let me see something. We're going to be going live in about five more minutes. I'm setting up to go live on the podcast right now. How's everybody doing? What's everybody, um, I mean, what, what, what's everybody doing with this economic dip that we have right now? Are you buying stocks? Are you buying crypto? If so, which stocks, what cryptos? Are you looking for quick flips, long term? Station family. Yep, here we go. Hey, she said, oh, "I'll always be a hill." That's what's up. <laughs> I got you. I got you. That's what's up. Uh, let's go ahead and actually share this out. Um, how the hell do I do this? Share. Ah, oh, okay. Man, they done upgraded so much of this stuff. I don't know what the heck they doing. Let me see. I don't know what they doing. Um, I'm going to leave that alone. All right, so we got a nice crowd in. Go Grand rise and peace, power, and prosperity to everybody that's tuning in. Brother Hill said he's buying and mining more crypto. Said he's buying and mining more crypto. The Hill said it may be related. Let me see what we got checking in over here on the YouTube side of things. Flip till I go get a whole Bitcoin and 32 ETH. My mans, my mans. That's what's up. And that's the name of the game. It's all about the accumulation. You got to go through that accumulation phase. Then you can decide that, okay, let me trade with a little bit of the profits that I have. But you don't want to trade in the beginning when you're first trying to build unless you're trading to build. You get what I mean? It's a difference. It's a difference. All right, so let me get this one, then we about to go live. I'm going to go ahead and reintroduce myself. Fo P E S C I. And I've been game banging since Chief Keith was knee high. That ain't this the little brother handles BI. Hold on, let me get this out. Uh, this episode doesn't have any audio. Okay. There we go. Peace, power, and prosperity, family. How we doing out there? Y'all already know what time it is. It is Chicago Crypto Hustler, Bitcoin Block Bully, coming to you once again with the early riser show, only for the early birds, a coffee and crypto. Um, right now, we are streaming live via YouTube, Facebook, and recording for the first time in a while. Coming back, New Money Matrix podcast. How's everybody doing out there? Um, you know, today is going to be fairly quick. Looking at a couple of stories to uh, gloss over, floss over, um, basically focusing on the accumulation of wealth through the use of digital assets, more so than can I buy Bitcoin now at six thousand and then just sell it off at twenty thousand? You know what I mean? The 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 end game I guess a lot more drawn out than some um, think. XMR seeing some pretty uh. Pretty nice gains over the last 24 hours. The way you look at the heat map, the greener it is, the return it seems. So Maker, um, Crow, Rep Augur, um, Engine Coin, XMR, which is Monero, seeing some of the uh, hugest gains over the last 24 hours. 
if we stop for a second and we come take a look at Bitcoin, utilizing our trading view account and looking at it on a daily chart. Let me open some of this up. We can see we can peak we peaked here on February 20th. Um and that was a high of ten thousand five hundred dollars. We currently sit at six thousand six hundred and twenty two dollars after a downtrend. You can see where the twenty one day exponential moving average was broke. Support gave way. And what happens to support once it is broken for those that have been in the space for any any amount of time is that it can then turn into resistance. And that's exactly what happened as the 21 day exponential comes in wraparounds. And instead of the price action being able to break and find support, it violently rejected it to the downside. Now, what we're looking at and seeing here, once again, is that same 21 day moving average playing as a level of resistance. We can see on the daily since the 24th, pretty much this 21 day exponential, which is coming in at about $6,722, has been utilized as a level of resistance. Not just these last three days. You could look at the fourth, um, what, the 23rd of March, actually coming up, testing, being rejected. Also, if we go back and we look at the 20th of March, we can see that this day had a very long wick to the upside almost perfectly getting rejected by the 21 day exponential. But what you do have, I guess you could say working in your favor, if it could play out, which you may have already seen it play out and you may see the sell off occur now, um, is the fact that we had positive momentum and the MACD crossed over the signal line back here around March 21st. Now around March 21st, you, excuse me, March 21st, you trade $5,863. And um, a high of $6,464. So regardless of where you would have entered on that day, right now you would be sitting in a nice amount of profit. Um, moving forward, if you look at the RSI, we did have a nice amount of upside. Up, and you're starting to get that, that, that break. And turn around, seeming like the downtrend may not be over. Um, you know, in my opinion, this isn't financial. Let me put this out there first and foremost. Out there, I do apologize. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a financial advisor. I cannot give financial advice. I'm not a tax advisor. I am not a tax advisor. I cannot give you tax advice. Um, more so of what I'm doing right now, we can look at it as um you know, shooting the shit or shooting the breeze for about a half hour. You know what I mean? Um, not to be looked at so much as, okay, what he says is law or maybe I should make a, um, a, a financial decision based off of what this brother may say. Now, this information can be utilized in a more educational standpoint whereas okay the information that the brother shares with me i can and utilize own and in furthering my, my own education now i can make a more um sound decision on what i may want to move forward with based off added information that this brother may have um shared with me um, you know, so just don't say anything that I, or don't use anything that I say during these videos as a, okay, run to the bank and go ahead and make a move based off of what he says. I guess that's what I'm saying in the long run. Um, anyways, hold on, let me see. There we go. Okay, just wanted to share that video um, out real quick before we take off. There we go. All right, cool. So Ethereum started to dip back down into the red area. Bitcoin back under 6,600. Um, I shared sentiment the other day when Bitcoin was shooting up to 
to around 65, 6,600, somewhere around that area. And in my opinion, it, and, and if we look back now, now that I think about it, if we look back a couple of days ago, it was, I think it was about two days ago. So it could have been this run up, could have been, no, it had to have been, what was the high here? The high here was 68. So yeah, it could have been that run up. The high here was 69 here, almost $7,000, but you're steady getting rejected. So you're not getting that push. You're waiting to the upside that you're looking, looking for, right? Now, what you are, starting to form here which i think should be looked at and utilize the level of support coming in at about just give or take on some sloppiness around 64 71 right so now you you can use this as a catalyst like okay as long as we're able to support and hold here i can keep my optimistic optimism or uh keep us continuing to move to the upside um until we break i'm gonna say seven thousand dollars though do not look for that push coming back up to around seven seventy six Coming back down to retest the um, previous support area around 78. Really, they got what? Between 73 and $7,800. But don't look for that to get even touched if we can't get back even cracking $7,000. Um, now, if you do lose the 74, 64, 70 area, give or take, um, I can see us coming back down into the mid and possible low $5,000 range. Um, looking anywhere from about Let me see, especially if you lose that 61 area, but around 57, um, going back down, maybe around $4,900. But what we could actually see is Bitcoin dump from being rejected at the 21 day exponential moving average and actually see a lower low created here. Whereas it comes and then, you know, you see a little light bounce possibly. Now, when this low was cre created, if still to the upside, as well as um, RSI continues to drive to the upside, then you're going to start creating what is known as bullish divergence. Whereas you're seeing a lower, lower low, lower highs possibly on the um, price chart, right? But then what you're seeing in your oscillators is. actually move to the moose uh continuous movement to the upside versus converging with price action and actually seeing that dip come down with the um candlestick movement if we want to look at an example of that for moving forward we can actually come back and scroll and pay attention to the head and shoulders pattern which we see seen here for those that were uh present for it let me clear this up a little bit so you can see it a little bit better but if you look at RSI, so what you have here, right? You got a low, you got a lower low, and then you have pretty much a, a even take away the wick low from the previous left shoulder. So this would be a left shoulder, head, right shoulder, head and shoulders broke up, gave you the move up to about $8,500. But if you look here, right? Note that you have a low, a higher than a much higher low. So what you're seeing is the oscillator or the relative strength of the market continue to while price action is actually seeing lower lows or even lows, right? And that gave you that push to the upside. Now, what happened here is you started hitting Tory on your RSI. All the while, you're seeing higher highs on the price chart. That is looked at. You can look at that as possible bearish diverge actually would have given you the setup and allowed you to get out of position um and you know that many others did take that weren't able to or are not able to actually come over and look at the charts so um enough of that uh, i'm gonna get into the story now because i do i did forget that i do have new money matrix podcast listeners listen and then and they're not able to see the charts though if you do choose to come and and look at um, a visual of the video that we're looking at right now. For those that may, you can go to Chicago Crypto Hustler on um, YouTube. You can go to Chicago Crypto Hustler on YouTube and tune in. Um, moving, moving right along. And moving into our first story. Oh, hold on. We find the right screen. I do apologize. Nope, this ain't it. Here we go. Um, crypto 
cryptocurrency exchange Kraken predicts wealth transfer will cause BT to three hundred and fifty thousand dollars by twenty forty five. Now it's only twenty twenty. We're talking about twenty forty five, right? So it's about another twenty five years. So Bitcoin right now now with six thousand, you know, moving up to price ranges of three hundred and fifty thousand. Long term hold. This is the the this is the the chance to get in on what some would look at now as the Amazon and had the world before individuals were interested in even investing in them basically saying that those that possibly in financial advice but possibly those that begin entering this space right um number one you're the pioneers of what we call this cryptocurrency space is what i call it. you are the pioneers number two you could be possibly setting up, up not because this is the thing we got to look at when we're talking about long-term general Way. It's not about you. It's about our children, but it's more so about our children, 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 because you really want to think at least two to three. I'm going to say four generations ahead. I mean, why wouldn't you want that which, you know, is seeded from you on down, not, you know, teach my son, teach my daughter something. And then when they get it, they go out on their own and, you know, they do whatever they do for their children. We got to stop, you know having that type of mindset and start thinking more so the long term man i in the future no ancestor and i'm able to interact with um those that come from my lineage i want them to be able to look and see that they're doing ex exceptionally good especially come in a family left up you know what i'm saying or down on their luck because of the choices that I did or didn't make. You just got to, um, you know, keep your eyes on the prize, which is the long term. But anyways, they're predicting 345. I um, use this about this. When we talk about 350K, right, they're talking about 300 Federal Reserve notes, U.S. dollars. Not telling you or considering is what will the price? Be, excuse me. What is what will the value of these three hundred and fifty thousand Federal Reserve notes be in twenty forty five? No one thinks about that, in my opinion. You could have a price like that, but what would those notes be worth when that year comes? In? You know what I mean? In the back about millionaire this, thousandaire that. Billionaire that you know in some countries per their notes you're already a millionaire you already got 350k per bitcoin if you go to certain currencies where that has pretty much faded and dropped and died off so i always get price points of eh, okay no one's i don't think anyone's really considering what the price of the dollar or the value of the dollar may you know what i mean but um Anything that you may want to consider, it is something, in my opinion, that you may want to consider. Um, going on into the story, it goes on to the generation Xers and the unique practicing in place and social distancing may find some solace that, in addition to saving lives, they may stand to inherit almost 70 trillion from baby boomers in the years to come. I'm going to say that again. It's, and it's interesting the way that they put it. Millennials and Generation Xs in the United States currently practice in sheltering in place, meaning that you really can't do too much but sit on the couch and sit in the house. Um, you know, you might find some comfort is what they're saying. And the fact that in addition to possibly saving lives from not coming outside, for those that have had their those that are older than themselves and those that come before themselves actually set this up for them, you stand to inherit almost 70 trillion from the baby baby boomers. Um, Kraken Intelligence, the in-house research team, and if you don't know what the baby boomers are, Google what are baby boomers. Those are the, those, those are those that came before us and inherited wealth from those that came before them. But um, as well as the generation Xers. Um, but the in-house research team at the crypto exchange of the same name released a new report entitled Inheriting USD and Acquiring BTCs, How the Great Wealth Transfer Will Fuel the Great Bitcoin Adoption. And I think I'm actually going to go, let me see, I'm actually going to, I may not be able to go through that here, but I might do, a, um, in fact, I am. I'll do a, a podcast 
And actually, depending on how how long this report is, I'll cover this full report on the podcast, New Money Matrix podcast. For those that don't know, it is available on iTunes, Spotify. I'll see. This is a 16 pager. Yeah. I may go live. In fact, you know what? I may do a um Yeah, because this is gonna take a while to break down. I may do what's the equivalent to a um what do they call it? A Patreon, you know, where individuals, you know, can come and donate and I'll break this down, whole thing and run it through. I may do a private, I don't know yet, but uh, this is an interesting report. I will be taking a look at this a little later. You also can take a look just by coming over to Cointelegraph and looking up the Kraken story and clicking on the report um, button. Anyways, it goes on to state that, according to the report, if the American millennials, just Americans, were to invest at least 5% of their inherited wealth in the BTC, they could drive the price up to 350 and uh, Now look at this. There go these 44 numbers. Up to 350,000, which five and three is eight. Eight is 44. Peak the game in 2044. This would effectively give the generational group almost 70 trillion of value from a $971 billion investment. Interesting. And you can see on the crypto exchange, on um, you can follow this on Twitter. Uh, they're saying assume a 5% investment, yada, 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 everything we just went through, and they got the uh, analytics and everything up for you. They go on to state, a, genero- a generational approach to investments. As Bitcoin has gained popularity, those in older generations with an affinity for traditional assets, including Warren Buffett, who has actually come out and spoken against uh, cryptocurrency, mainly in my opinion, it's, it's not their time. You know what I mean? It may not be their time. This may be for the newer generations, those that are coming in right now. Um, exactly. Yeah, they're definitely going off the current price. Uh, when we're looking at the um, expectations that they're speaking on, um, but such investors from the traditional world have often been unwilling to embrace cryptocurrency. The Kraken report looks at data on this divide, expanding on cultural profiles of generational X, generation Xers and millennials, and how their upbringing has affected their view of BTC and the crypto markets in general. So how are you upbringing your children to look at cryptocurrency and Bitcoin? Are you teaching them about it? Are you making them familiar with it? Are you understanding that this cryptocurrency, this thing that may be foreign and new to us, may be the very currency that our children will have to assimilate and utilize? I hope that we are preparing them for that so that they don't have to take so much of a shock and have to deal with it on the ass end and learn on their own. Um, They go on to stay out of the report itself. Older generations, Brother Michael, peace, power, and prosperity. How are we doing this this morning? Um, This rising. Older generations possess a less favorable view of Bitcoin than millennials and Generation Xers. 81% of U.S. adults were familiar with at least one type of cryptocurrency, Bitcoin being the most popular at 75%. Approximately 55% of millennials and 41% of Generation X familiar with at least one cryptocurrency voiced their belief that cryptocurrencies will become very or somewhat widely accepted for legal transactions before 2030. So we're talking about within the next nine years and some change. With many older Americans on the verge of retirement, the report suggests only more Bitcoin options and investing in the future. It's like children up, our seeds up. A disproportionate percentage of the millennials and Generation X will continue to be the driving force of adoption of cryptocurrency for the foreseeable future. While this is by the fact that both generations harness a greater technological competence than their elders, we should also consider that Bitcoin's current volatility is unsuitable. Speaking on the great wealth wealth transfer, baby boomers in the United States currently control approximately 57% of the total. We know that. Are we part of that 57%? Once again, baby boomers in the United States States. Currently, part of that. 50 trillion of which will pass the millennials and Generation Xers in the next two years. This redistribute this. 
distribution of transfer. I'll be honest with you, until I got into this space, into this business, I had no idea. I've never even heard of the term. Well, I circle money all day. But that goes to show you that even though you may be playing with a number of Federal Reserve mo- notes, does not mean that you know, understand, or comp- how it's supposed to be used for, or what true wealth is. You can be paper rich, which I like to call, excuse my term, nigger rich, you know, which a lot of background in the, the um, demographics that I do, we've been plenty of time. You know, it's a lot of individuals who have passed along who had the bag. Doesn't get left for the children because they didn't put it in anything of value as far as assets to pass down. 44, 44%. Damn, I, I don't know if y'all caught it. It was just at 44, 44% right here. Negative. Um, But anyways, uh, if younger people were to use just 1% of the wealth to invest in BTC, the price can rise up to 70000 if not more in 2044. This is based only on investors in the United States, though, meaning the actual numbers could easily be higher. Being one of the most crypto-friendly generations certainly has its perks. So that is the first story coming in once again from Cointelegraph, um, talking about the great wealth transfer and cracking predicting the price to go to 350000 by 2045. Going into the next story, which piggybacks or can segue. Um, Bitcoin firms report an uptick in the demand for inheritance services. Trust, wills, something we need to look at. How, we, how, how are we managing passing down the wealth? Who is going to take care of the business once we're gone? Cryptocurrency startups are reporting increased demand for estate planning services. As the coronavirus outbreak motivates users to make sure their coins are passed onto their heirs when they die. A lot of us coming up within the um, quote unquote black community know absolutely nothing about estate planning. Know absolutely nothing about heirs passing down. Other than our characteristics and traits. Um, and let me not say coming from the demographics that I come from. Let me not say those coming from a quote unquote black community. Coming from the demographics from which I spawn. Um, it goes on to state that Casa Hado and Unchained Capital said they have been a there has seen they have seen a dramatic rise in requests for proof of death or similar multi-signature wallet schemes that enable customers' Bitcoin to be transferred to a loved one following an untimely death. Wow. So now what they're looking for, family, is a form of a digital will or trust in the creation of a wallet, multi-signature wallet, which allows for, in my opinion, is going to be a smart contract, which is going to operate in the event that someone passes. Um, This is interesting. They go on to state, we've seen more demand than any other time in our history over the past month for vaults. Unchained Capital Chief Product Officer Will Cole said, many vault customers set up via trust uh or other inheritance supported entities. No, excuse me. Many vault customers set up via trust or other inherit inheritance supported entities. That's been true the past few weeks as well. Bitcoin's seizure resistant technology. I'm going to say that again. Bitcoin's seizure resistant technology makes it impossible to transfer without the consent of someone holding a private key. If Bitcoin is to be money. It needs infrastructure to handle assets when life's prevailing circumstances alter one's plans, such as a medical accident or death. Casa Hado, uh, Casa Hado CEO Nick Newman said half of recent inbound sales process, prospects have specifically asked about the firm's inheritance service, Casa Covenant. Covenant, huh? A real interesting one when your eyes get open and you start noticing certain words, how they're utilized, what the etymology is of the etymon, um, basically the origination of the word. But anyways, the firm, which focuses on user-friendly private key storage solutions, has had three times the number of clients in the first three weeks of March than January and February. And I think that has a lot to do with um, this impeding coronavirus and the health scare that's going on right now. People, family. Individuals are trying to find ways because it's not, man, tomorrow's not guaranteed. 
You have to be able to think ahead, think of the future, think of when you're not going to be here and not so much of when you are here. Because that, at the end of the day, is what's going to matter more so than anything. Um, what type of legacy you leave, but more so what type of help do you leave for those that come after you um, and those that came from you? Um, so what people are, in, what individuals are doing now and understand that we're talking about companies that hold assets of over a couple million, probably a couple of billion dollars in cryptocurrency. So when we talk about this thing possibly being a joke, hee hee ha ha, um, I wouldn't touch that. That's some, man, how, how, how little we know. Um, anyways, it goes on to state that, um, They've had three times the number of clients coming in over the last than more over the last two months combined for his diamond class product, which includes the inheritance wallet service. Newman said Casa Hada was looking to add the feature to his first and second tier services, gold and platinum soon, he added, meaning that they don't even have this available for people that are gold and platinum right now. The inheritance wallet service. That means this is some upper echelon. You got to have X amount of uh, capital and be in this specific tax bracket for you to even utilize these services as a passing down your cryptocurrency. Your love. It's a lot more than meets the eye going on here, family. Um, we allow clients to hold their private keys and securely pass their Bitcoin onto their heirs in the case that doing so is necessary so that clients don't ever have to relinquish control of their Bitcoin to a third party. Not just Bitcoin. Meanwhile, the outbreak has strengthened Ethereum's developers' motivation to create similar infrastructure for Bitcoin's top competitors. Even before coronavirus became a household name, the Alfred project at Denver's Ethereum was building a suit for tools, a suit of tools, excuse me, a suite of tools for transferring tokens under the ERC-20 and ERC-721 non-fungible token standards. Project member Seth Goldfarb said the team chose the name Alfred to put a kind face on an uncomfortable topic. And that's um, what they're doing there. It's uh, psychological, playing off the chakras, um, taking something that may be unfamiliar or uncomfortable and using, I guess you could say, a scapegoat or something that is familiar to ease any type of uncomfortability that you may um, feel. They do that a lot in this <laughs> with a lot of other things. But anyways, if, uh, from a technical perspective, the system would have two parts. An Oracle service regularly scanning public sources for doubt, death announcements. Wow. And an escrow service. Um, when the Oracle detects a subscriber's death, and for those that don't know when we're speaking on Oracle, Chainlink and Band Protocol are two of the top Oracles right now. Um, so keep that in mind. Those are two of the, uh, really, Chainlink is one of the top oracles. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, but they go on to say that when the oracle detects a subscriber's death, the escrow system would begin a countdown for sending the user's digital assets to a chosen third party, such as a family member. Wow. This is a trust system. It's written in smart contracts. A tr uh, uh, trust uh, a life alert, in a sense, a life alert button could stop the escrow service from going through if needed, Goldberg, uh, Goldfarb said. For now, the project remains in the development stage, however. Family, if y'all got people that know how to code, know how to write in JavaScript or one of the other um, technical uh, languages, family, this is, is highly, highly suggested. And I don't give suggestions. Highly suggested that you get them into this new blockchain space. The rewards that they'll reap over the next couple of years is to preparing, because if you're getting your kids prepared for the future and what's this to hold, you're initially getting their children prepared and their children's children prepared in the event that your children are able to pass down what you've passed down to them to theirs, and so on and so on and so on. Anyways, it goes on to state, while an unsavory topic, death that is, inherent inheritance protocols are a necessary part of the tech stack if digital assets are to endure, particularly if they rise in value. It's not nice to think about, but it may be prudent to have a detailed plan for what will happen to your Bitcoin when you die. Lightning Labs engineer Alex Bosworth said on Twitter. There's a couple of things to keep in mind, family. The wealth transfer and what are you going to do when you pass? Um, moving into the next story. Japan's invest to buy the dip for the Bitcoin bloodbath. Let me see what we got going on right here. Give me one second. See what type of time we got right now running on the um podcast. Oh, okay, it's only 7.30. We, we're actually good on time. 
Cool. All right. Getting into what's going to be our last story. Number of retail investors registering for an account with Japanese cryptocurrency exchange spiked by 40% in the week after the big, big, Bitcoin bloodbath. The March 12th met meltdown saw the price of Bitcoin, Bitcoin drop to a new low $3,775. An official blog post by this Yuya Hasuga excuse me, reveals that Bitcoin trade volume and account registration boasters in the wake of the crash. Even the numbers users going above average on the day of the Bitcoin downturn in the following couple of people are waiting for those dips. This is the thing. What happens is is, is for new jump in when the prices are going up, 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 up. And then when the prices were down, 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 they end up taking profit. Now the profit ends up uh, where the late bloomers came in and entered that. So what happens is, is they out of that position, watch it go down and then watch the smart right back up. So what happens is Bitcoin went down to around, we'll say 4,000. I've seen it go down to 4,400 myself. And individuals are probably just now saying, hey, the price is $700 and saying, I'm going to buy now. How to rock with these markets. Um, anyways, the individual um, Hasagawa contrasts the current situation to the period between November to December when the price of Bitcoin ground down. In the crypto market as a whole went down and BitBank's daily account registrations took a hit. However, the price saw a 60% rebound while sustaining high volumes soon after the recent crash, which suggests to Hasegawa the intent to buy the dip is quite obvious. When we take the increased daily account registrations into consideration, we can once again deduce the current market recovery is driven largely by retail investors. Furthermore, as Forbes reports, the phenomenon is likely to be global, as Kraken, a San Francisco-based crypto exchange, experienced a steep increase in account registrations. Um, the Bitcoin halving makes it a safe bet. In just under 49 days, damn, that came quick, um, BTC will experience a halving where the block reward will decrease to 6.25 BTC. The last time this happened was in 2016. And then you see what happened in 2017. Not saying that that's going to happen again, though. Um, Hesagawa, Hesagawa, yeah, writes that data from Google Trends suggests that investors in Japan and around the world are well aware of the possible price impact of the housing and will seize on any price drop to add to their holdings. There's a good chance that for this time around, there are many retail investors who want to buy Bitcoin or stack up this price possible before it's housing. What do you think, family? Do you think the halving is priced thin? You think we still got some more up way to go? Um, let's go take a look at the co cryptocurrency land as a whole and see where we're at. Um, market cap sitting at 182 billion, 46 million, 345,300. Now you got a um 24-hour volume of 36 million seven hundred and eighty thousand and four dollars. BTC dominance right now coming in at a 60 cents. So BTC dominance is growing as the price went down. Just we can run through the top 20 coins real quick. Coming in at number one, you got Big Bang Hang. Bitcoin trading at 6631, down 0.44 hours. Coming in at number two, you got Ethereum trading at $135.56, down 1.25% within the last 24 hours. Coming in at number three, interestingly enough, you got XRP, which is trading at 16 cents, which is actually up 1.36% within the last 24 hours. Coming in at number four, you got USDT trading at a dollar, which is the cryptocurrency equivalent to the United States dollar, which is a stable coin, which is where you put your funds if you do not want to be subjected to the price volatility of the rest of the market. Coming in at number five, even though you will see a small amount of volatility. Coming in at number five, you got Bitcoin Cash trading at $223, actually up 2.64% within uh, the last 24 hours. Coming in at number six, you got BSV, Bitcoin SV trading at $171, up 0.5% with in the last 24 hours. Coming in at number seven, you got Litecoin trading at $39.12, up 0.9% within the last 24 hours. Coming in at number eight, you have EOS trading at $2.30, up 1.7% within the last 24 hours. Coming in at number nine, you got BNB, Binance Coin, trading at $12.28, up 0.9% within the last 24 hours. Coming in at number 10, you got OKB trading at $4.21, up 2.7% within the last 24 Coming in at number 11, you got, uh, no, excuse me, my fault. Coming in at number 10, you got Tezos. Um, XTZ trading at a dollar seventy two, up two point seventeen percent within the last twenty four. I do apologize for that mix up. Coming in at number eleven, you got OKB trading at four dollars and twenty one cents, 
down to 2.68% within the last. Coming in at number 12, we got Leo, who has been acting as a stable coin for a while now, which that may have been what they brought it out for. Right now, it's um, up 0.5% within the last 24. Coming in at number 13, you got XMR Monero trading at $50. Right now, up 9.8%. Wow. Um, privacy coin jumping up over 10% within the last 24 hours. Coming in at number 14, you got Huobi token trading at $3.35, up 0.02% within the last 24 hours. Coming in at number 15, you got XLM Stellar trading at $0.04, cent, up 2.4 hours. Coming in at number 16, you have Link trading at $2.25, up 0.9% within the last 24 hours. Coming in at number 17, you have ADA trading at $0.02, cents, up 1.4% within the last 24 hours. Coming in at number 18, you have Tron, who was trading at a penny, up 2. 21% within the last 24 hours. And last but not least, top number two privacy coin Dash trading at $67.46, up 0.6% within the last 24 hours. Family, it is your top 20 coins in the market. Um, questions or comments in closing? Do we got any questions or comments in closing? Let me see how many people we got checking in. Peace, power, and prosperity to everyone that's tuning in with me right now. I want to thank everyone that did find the time to come tune in with the bully. Um, Brother Hutchison, Brother Lamar, Brother Weber, Miss Harris, Miss Sheila, uh, Brother Marco, Miss Harding, uh, Miss Camacho. How's everybody doing today? Grand Rising to the Multitude. Brother Mayweather, what's going on? Let me see what we got checking in on the YouTube side of things. Okay, we got a couple of individuals checking in on YouTube. Any questions or comments real quick in closing before we get out of here? Ugh. If not, we will be ending this early roster show of Coffee and Crypto with the Bitcoin block bully. I was able to tune in and rock with me for the, this last half hour, give or take. Um, and let me see. Let me go scan the questions or comments coming in. I do know that there is a bit of a lag, so I'll give it a couple of minutes. Um, in the meantime, what we'll do is we'll take a last look at Bitcoin real quick to see what's going on. Let's see. Let's open this back up. Remember, I put this. I'm gonna leave this here to see what happens. Also, but uh, open this back up. Throw on my moving averages once again. Let's look at a four hour and see what's going on. Okay, so real interesting. On a four hour coming up, hitting that rejection level. Um, and what's happening is if we look at our MACD, you're actually starting to cross over and possibly go into where you are actually are in negative um territory. Let's see. Yeah, see. Hold on, let me see. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. You can look at it um, as a bit of bearish divergence on a four hour where you're seeing, I guess you can say higher highs, but then on the MACD, which you were seeing, oh, excuse me, if you can see, we're actually lower highs indicated here. So um, let's take a look real quick at each. Ethereum, see how power actually getting smacked down and broke by the 100 day moving average. Finding support though by the 55 and now the 21 day exponential. Um, what do we got going on here? Wow, it came 618. So peep the game. From a swing high to a swing low here, you came up, hit the 1618 retracement level, and bounced right back down. To the same. Nice. Let's go ahead and actually let's move a couple of things. No, let me take a larger look at here. Make sure I don't have a lot, so we can get rid of that. Um, one th thing we can take a look is our fib levels. See where we're at on retracement. Let me extend this. And then expand it. There we go. Now, I'm looking at Ethereum. If I'm going to be giving you a couple price points to just go off of for those that be listening on the new money matrix. Here we go. ETH right now from a swing high of about $285 to a swing low of $86. Bucks. Right now, you're just coming.
coming in, three six at one hundred and thirty three dollars and seventeen cent. Right now, you're trading at one hundred and thirty four forty nine. It, in, in my opinion, you will be getting a re, you, you may be getting a rejection here if you're not able to break and hold the support here above the two three. Six and around one hundred and sixty-two dollars. That's your three eight two. But as of right now, you have not confirmed the open and close above this two three section here. You may not make it. Now on the weekly, you are going into negative momentum on the MACD. See, break this down on the daily. Let me see what we got going on. Ah, see, on the daily, look, you're just jump but that 21 day exponential moving average is coming down in my opinion going to weigh you down so you can consolidate you know minimum up thrust probably going back up to around what 153 155 possibly but for the most part um i can see it probably grinding out here and then coming back down to see lower lows um then maybe 108 dollars especially if bitcoin dumps you're definitely going to see lower lows with ethereum let me check one more time to see if we got any type of comments, any questions. If not, I'm going to go ahead and end this here. Brother Perry, peace, power, and prosperity. You caught me at the ass in, Brother Perry. Um, I'm looking for lower prices on BTC. Yep, yep, I as well. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and end this episode of Coffee and Crypto with the Bitcoin Block Bully. For those that missed it, it can be seen on Facebook, YouTube. And if for those that just want to listen in, you can actually listen into it on the New Money Matrix podcast, available on iTunes, Anchor, Spotify, and a number of of other streaming service video cast peace power and prosperity family i am out of here